Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy, Joey Does Tech, and welcome yourselves back to a brand new video. You guys are probably sat there like, Joey, please just sort your facial hair out. I'll do it, I promise. Anyway, we are here for an attempted repair. Today is another landmark on Joey Does Tech YouTube. I bought a Nintendo DSi XL on eBay. It was 25 pound plus three pounds. So I think it was around about 28 pound for this Nintendo DSi XL. The issue you ask? a broken charging port. I'll show you in better quality when we get over to the desk because I can't, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's gonna pick it up that well, but you'll see that one of the prongs is absolutely just disappeared. Someone looks like they've taken a knife or a screwdriver to it, or they've just even potentially pushed it in a bit too far and it's just, fell off the face of the earth. When I originally first bought the Nintendo DSi XL Blue version that we managed to fix in a video you'll be able to see in one of the corners, I purchased some Nintendo DSi XL charging ports, which I believe are actually the same as a normal DSi. And it turns out I didn't need them. So I've got two here. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna use a hot air gun or a soldering iron. I might even mix between the two. This is the first time I've ever done this. So I'm a little bit nervous. Without further ado and enough of my complete jibber jabber, let's get on with it. Wish me luck. Okay, so these are my new nitrile gloves, which are exactly the same as the previous box that I bought. And they feel, they feel a little bit thinner, which I guess is good, right? Because it might provide some more accuracy for me. So I've got a couple of tools at the ready. One of them being the most important thing, I think, in my life at this moment in time is isopropyl alcohol. That's gonna be used to clean up the flux off of the board and tidy it up after we've done a job on it. Then we've got the, the uh, flux itself, which is very watery. It says no clean, but you do still need to clean it. I have got a prying tool. I've got a pair of tweezers. I've got my knife. And of course, I have my solder and my day out toolkit. I might need additional tools as we go on, but if that is the case, I will show you. Evidently, the first things first is taking apart the Nintendo DSi XL, and for that, I'm using a triple zero Phillips head screw driver. Battery compartment, you're out of here. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you. I forgot one of the most important things in my toolkit. Ceramic tweezers. One cover, two cover, three cover. 17th cover. One screw, two screw, three screw, four screw, five screws, six screws, 17th screw. Should be able to take the back of this off now. And we do that just by sliding a prime tool around. Now you have to be careful when you lift these up, you do have ribbon cables that are connected. See that? So you've got two ribbon cables, one here, one there. And these, as I learned from my last video, are both for L and R. I think also the SD card. I'm gonna peel these off. I will put these back, the little white strips, because they will be handy. Just need to remember that they go over the smaller ribbon cables. But it's good that they're here. Antenna wire over here, lift up. And this, I believe, also just pulls off, like so. The door to board power board, it's this one over here, this small one. And now we just have some more screws. I'm gonna put these screws as the motherboard lays out because I've not taken one of these out yet. Here, screw in the top right, two on the left side, three on the left side here actually. Just checking to see if there's any more I need to remove. Doesn't look like it from what I can see, so therefore we should, in theory, just be able to slide this on out or pull it on out. Oh. Actually, hang about, there is a ribbon cable. Be very, very cautious and just be careful. There is a ribbon cable on the back side, which I believe connects the LCD to the motherboard. So you just need to prop this one up, which can prove difficult. Ceramic tweezers coming in again, very clutch. And we just gently wiggle that one out. And we have freed the motherboard. Now I am also just quickly taking note, if I just move that up a second, I'm just taking note of where these wires go, you see? because then when I put this back, I want it to be as easy as possible. Now we get on to the groovy stuff. I'll now show you the close-up inspection of this charging port, because even I don't know exactly what's happened with it. Now we have one metal prong. I don't know if it's metal or copper. People are probably gonna roast me for that, but we only have one, so this has been severely damaged. I don't know where the other one's gone, whether somebody just pulled it out and the other one came out with it. The charging port itself looks in pretty good condition. I have nothing else to compare it to because this is the first one that I'm doing. I now need to come in with a plan of attack. The way that I'm thinking is that we suck up as much solder as we can on this side of the board, and that's just gonna be using our solder wick to soak this up. And then on the other side, I don't know whether to use a heat gun because there's some very, there's an F, I believe it's F1 actually, the fuse here is very, very close to the charging port. So what I don't wanna do is melt that away and then, uh, and then that's all she wrote. So what I'll see if I can do is solder that off just with a soldering iron to be more accurate. If I can't, 
I'll then probably go to the heat gun. Now I'm gonna try and make this the best job I can. And I think the proper way is gonna be to flux up these two pads, add a tiny bit of solder and then desolder. This is senior solder, um, OAP solder, we call it. I'm gonna add a little bit of solder here. Now we take our soldering braid, place it over the top. I mean, it looks okay as far as desoldering goes. There might be a little bit, I'm just trying to angle it better for me to see. Might be a little bit more. So again, what I'll do is I'm gonna add a tiny bit more flux. I think that's done the job a little bit better. There we go, it seems to be a bit cleaner. And now before I move on to the other side and start messing with that, I am going to get an earbud or cotton bud with some IPA just to clean up the loose flux residue that's gonna be stuck to the board. If I can do this, anyone can. So if you do fancy your chances, make sure to just watch as many videos as you want on the device that you're wanting to change a charging port for and just go for it. Okay, I think we're looking okay to be 100% honest. I think we've done an okay job at just removing the solder there. Now what we need to focus on is cleaning up the solder on these ports here. Now the video that I watched, he actually just clipped off with, uh, with wire cutters. He just said, oh, I don't need this charging port because it's broken. It's gonna clip off, but I don't wanna damage the pads. So again, what I'm probably gonna end up doing is just fluxing this to remove the solder that's on there previously and then see if I can pull it off. Place it on the little pads around. If I can get away with taking up the solder there, I'm gonna do the exact same on this gold prong. Just try and avoid the F1 fuse as much as I can. What I think I'm gonna do for this is I am gonna to attempt to use my heat gun. Now, annoyingly, and I know there's gonna be a lot of people who are like, what are you talking about, Joey? I don't have any capped on tape, so I'm gonna to have to take my hot air gun and just be extremely cautious. Because like I said, this F1 fuse, this green fuse that's here, literally just below the charging port. If I'm not careful, that's gonna fly away. So I'm gonna put it on literally no air. So I'm gonna put it on one, which is the lowest it goes. And I'm just gonna see if I can take off this charging port and we'll see how we get on. So let's try that. I'd say that's pretty successful. It's still hot, so bear that in mind, Joey. The only thing that I can see that may have been an issue there, I, I'm not too sure, and I don't know what to do next, because usually I'd ask you guys, but this isn't a live stream. It took one of the pads off, so as careful of, as I was, that was no force really trying to take off that charging port. It wasn't that much. It, it has taken one of the pads off here, and I don't know the importance of that pad. It is the one on the left. It's this one over here that is the issue. I'm gonna try and take it off from this, I think. But you should be able, now that it's a little bit cleaner, you can see here how it's meant to be a silvery color like this one, but there's nothing there. Yeah, I don't know how much of an impact that's gonna have on it when I try and charge it. So that's a little bit of an issue, I guess. Do I just try and, do I just glue it back down? Like what happens when a pad comes off? Can I just resolder like where it is, you know? Okay, so I have consulted the JDT community in the Discord. Shout out to everybody who's in there. By the way, link's in the description if you do wanna come and hang out. This is the pad that is meant to go here, but apparently it's more so for strength and we don't need to really worry about it. As well as this one over to the right as well. The two main ones in the center, they're the ones that we need to be concerned about and these ones are just more so for strength, which kind of makes sense. Could be wrong though. So please let me know in the comments and obviously I'll find out if this doesn't work. What I'm gonna do now is just tidy up the solder that's in between these pads. You can see there's a little bit on either side. I'm just gonna run my soldering iron over them to suck up any excess solder that remains there. So now we actually look at getting the port back in, I believe, which is arguably the trickiest bit. So there we go, I've tinned up the pads as much as I needed to. Oh dear. It looks like I've been missold. Let me check the other one just to make sure, see if it's the same. Yeah, it is the same. Basically, if we look at the board, you've got 
These aren't through holes. These are literally just solder, solder joints. The only through holes that you've got are these two at the top, okay, for the support. On this, you've got the two through holes which are either side here and here. But at the bottom, I don't know if you can see the length of these two prongs and the prongs on the other side as well. So when I go to mount this charging port, they obviously don't go through here. I mean, they go through this part. So if I, if I was to turn this around and just use the two mounting ports at the front, lovely, look at that, snug as a bug in a rug. Is that what they, that's, I think that's what they call it. But obviously that's not the right way around. So, and you can see how much these poke out of the board. So I might have to do some trimmings and I'm not confident about that. So let's get cutting. Did not expect this. Okay. Okay, so it's not too bad. I've still got quite a bit to go, I think, because it needs to be level. This needs to be level with the board and it's nowhere near. So I've still got quite a bit to cut away, which is good. Do I need to cut? I think it's all four of them as well. I need to be roughly the same level-ish. Okay, that's good. At least I know, at least I know. Again, not something I'd really recommend doing because I've probably completely ruined one of them. Uh, so it looks a little bit, it's still got a little bit on the back, but once we solder that down to the points, we should, should be okay. As long as I can make a connection between those, we should be all right. Two nice blobs on the back, but now we need to try and do something with the front. Okay, they look, it looks okay, but again, this is the first time I've done it, so I can't really <laughs> tell. Let's take some IPA and just clean it up and then we'll give it a test. I think I can just, I don't know if I can just plug this board in and test, but I'm gonna put it back together because then it's a bit more interesting, I think, for you guys, especially if I put it all back together and it doesn't work. So I'll show you in a sec the finished, I say finished product, but right. To show you guys then, let's have a look. Okay, so as you can see, it's not gonna be plush plush, but I think we've done the best job we can for my skill set. As you can see, it's kind of plush with the board. There is a little bit of, a, of it sticking out, but that's just me not cutting enough, but it was difficult to judge. But I'm just trying to get a close up of all the soldering. So you can see there, it's all connected. It doesn't have a blob on the left hand side because, the, because that came up with the old one and it's pretty damn secure. So we should be okay. As long as it works, I'm happy with that. Considering the fact as well that we didn't really have a choice but to cut. But yeah, there we go. Now let me put it back together and give it a test. Okay, so <laughs> the only things that I haven't put back are the screws for the back of the case, which obviously go in, and as well as the little rubber feet. I spend most of my time trying to get this thing to actually focus. Okay, yeah, so it's not, uh, has it gone in a bit too much? It doesn't look, I mean, the placement of it actually looks okay. Speakers? Yeah, okay, so we're all good from a from a turning it back on point of view. I'm just gonna make sure touchscreen works fine as well, so, and it's really loud. Let me make sure that it actually fits correctly first off. Which way does it go? This way. Which it does, it fits snug, and as you can see from me pulling the cable, it's not coming out easy. Okay, so that's okay, it's not, it's not much wiggling. Up and down is fine. Maybe the side to side is a little bit of wiggle. But again, it makes a good connection. I'm just gonna compare it to this one actually. Just see how much of a difference it is. That one still wiggles quite a bit as well. And again, yeah, there's a there's same, same connection, same connection. Okay, moment of truth. If I open this and there's an orange light, we are successful. Let me check on this blue one first. Wait, the orange light should show. Unless it's fully charged. Wait, it's not charging. We have no luck. If I close that and keep the DSi on, if I give this a wiggle, nothing, it just shows it is sleeping. Okay, let me take this one. But this one isn't working either. Could the charge, is it the charger? <laughs> Oh man, what's going on? Let me turn it on. If I turn this one on, close it up. Exactly the same, so it kind of fades. Wait, is the charger screwed then? 
Oh, wait a minute, this one came with a USB cable. Oh, sweet. Yeah, this one is, this is a charger. Wait a minute, I've got a... Nothing on the charging line. Maybe they do need to be dead. Because this is a different charger now. It's plugged in via USB, mind. This has full battery as well though, so I am worried. Oh, it charges. That charges with the original charger. So the charger is fine. Okay, so if the charge is fine. Okay, so on the three on the 3DS XL, the charger seems okay. This is broken by the way, this one. So this other cable also provides a charge to the Nintendo 3DS XL, okay. But then if I try and hear, nothing. Same on the other one. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and make the assumption that both of these have full batteries, hence why the orange light isn't coming on. I'm gonna test that theory. If I plug this battery in and turn on the Nintendo the SIXL, this is the blue one. This is not the one we've done the port repair on. When I plug the cable in the charger, it doesn't show that it's charging here, but in the top right, you've got the orange battery symbol. And put the exact same battery in this, where we've done the charging port, turn it on. And if I plug this in, it's not showing charging. So that would indicate to me that the port is not soldered correctly or being replaced correctly. So I'm about to take it apart and do some further inspections. I'm actually gonna turn the heat gun on and uh, and just remove it and re-add it because, I don't know, I don't really have a clue as to why it wouldn't be charging. Everything looks connected. I'm worried about this pin here that, well, I've still got it actually. I've got it here. Sorry, when I say pin, I mean pad. I've still got the pad here. I'm just worried that that might have something to do with it. I'm just gonna try and redo it again. Again, it looks pretty solid, I think. There's not much. The fact that I've had to cut the things away just anno has annoyed me because it's not a simple process anymore. So this is me attempting to give it a bit of a better soldering job. So I haven't taken it completely off. I've just tidied it up a little bit and I'll, uh, I'll try it now. Okay, this is the testing moment of truth. Again, we're not looking for an orange light necessarily. We're just looking for the charging symbol to appear. Still nothing. Let's try and remove it and put it back, I guess. Okay, uh, this was attempt 734. We've, uh, we've just resoldered again. We made it a bit shorter. Hopefully it sits a bit more flush with the board. So this is gonna be interesting to see if it works or not. Like I said, I've just put that pad back on as well. And when I say put it back on, I mean I've just rammed it in, because why not, right? But it is connecting with the board to some extent. So we'll just see what happens. I'm gonna put it back together and then we're gonna test it. Pay attention to the charging light at the top right. Is it gonna change? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> oh. So I've managed to reduce the battery as much as possible now. And uh, you can clearly see that it needs a bar and it's just not charging no matter how much I wiggle around. Doesn't, even the light, charging light doesn't show. I'll try a different cable as well just to make sure. Exactly the same. Nothing here either. This cable is a bit shorter, hence why. Oh, hence why the issue. But yeah, I can't. It's not working. Doesn't want to charge, and I don't really know what to do with it. If I'm being honest, I was not able to fix it. Sometimes I just need to accept it and get on with it. But I am hurt, <laughs> upset, and angry. I started this around 11 a.m. today, and it's now 24 minutes past five. If this video manages to get 20 likes by tomorrow, I'll do a live stream in the afternoon if you guys want it anyway, and we'll see if we can fix it together because when we all put our brains together, we seem to get things done. I hope you guys enjoyed, even if it wasn't a fix. I hope you have a great weekend. I've got a lot of editing to do. Peace.